It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the North Carolina Courage, Kaylee Kurt, Kurtz. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to play professional soccer? Yeah, of course. Um, so I was playing my my final year at University of South Carolina, and I went back and forth on my decision a lot. Um, I had no idea when I was playing in my last game uh, that I wanted to go play professionally. Um, I hadn't chose to sign up for the draft for the NWSL yet. And I was just kind of going back and forth on my decision. Do I want to join the professional world or do I want to join professional soccer world? And it wasn't until the last five minutes of the game when I was losing to UNC when I looked up at the clock and just started having like a panic attack. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the last five minutes I'm ever going to play. And I'm not sure if I'm ready for that to be the last five. So I remember that the like bell sounded, game was over, we lost. And I went up into the stands and hugged my dad. And I was like, I'm, I'm not done. Like, I'm going to keep playing. And it was in that moment I decided I was going to keep playing soccer. That's so amazing. What was your time like at the South Carolina Gamecocks? It was amazing. Um, Jamie and Shelly were really, really inclusive. Um, I transferred from the University of Richmond, so it was uh, already like a weird experience since I went to one university and I was having to go to another. I thoroughly enjoyed my time there. Of course, what was that time like transferring from Richmond University to South Carolina? It was tough. I hated the recruiting process. It scared me. I didn't love talking to coaches. I didn't really know what I wanted out of a university in the first place. So having to go through the recruiting process again, I had a bit more of an idea that I wanted to go to a bigger school with a bigger soccer program, but it was still scary trying to quote unquote, like sell myself for um, these coaches and be like, this is what I can do for you. But you just have to kind of trust me, you know? What was that feeling like for the first time putting on both the Richmond jersey and the South Carolina Gamecocks jersey? The University of Richmond jersey was a very, like, surreal experience. It was, I've always wanted to be a Clayton Fire player. I didn't know what that was going to entail. Um, but putting on the Richmond jersey for the first time and lacing up my boots, it was just, my heart was racing. It was a great, great feeling. Um, I was starting my freshman year, so it was like big and I felt like I could make a huge impact right away. Putting on the South Carolina jersey was also very nerve wracking because we were the SEC. It was a bigger league. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to compete or not. Um, I had just gotten there, but it was it was really amazing to walk out in my jersey for the first time in Eugene Stadium and there was just a packed stadium. We have one of the best attendance records in the country. And I remember I just had goosebumps walking out. It was amazing. Of course, with South Carolina, what was it like playing in the SEC, playing Florida, Georgia, Vanderbilt, and Tennessee every day? It was really fun. Um, For me, uh, especially at the time, I was way more of a physical player than I was a technical player. Um, and I think the SEC is perfect for that. We're known for that, for speed, athleticism, um, kind of more of a direct style. So it fit me really well. But playing some of those uh, players every single day, it definitely made me better. Um, Savannah Jordan used to play in our league for the Houston Dash, and she would always she played for Florida. And I remember always trying to compete with her. Um, Simone Charlie, she's still in our league playing for the Portland Thorns. We just played a few nights ago. And um trying to keep up with her speed was just like always a challenge but it was something that was really exciting when it came up love playing against her 
and hated it, but. <laughs> what were some of your collegiate accomplishments playing soccer? Um, I didn't really get any accolades until my senior year, but I did win through my team the defensive player of the year my junior year and then senior year I got NCAA player of the week um, halfway through the season and then the rest just started rolling in um, I got SEC defensive player of the year um, I got first team all-american first team all-scholar American um, all SEC first team all first team SEC scholar um, it, it, they just started rolling in my senior year. It was definitely a surreal feeling. I, I told my dad at the beginning of my senior season that I wanted to be a like third team all American. That's, I, that was like my big goal. I wanted to be a third team all American. And he was like, are you sure? Like, don't, don't like bank on that. Don't have your happiness depend on whether you get that accolade or not. That's a very elite club. And um, by the end of the season, I ended up being a first team All-American. When I found that out, my heart stopped. <laughs> it was just so amazing. Had no idea that was coming. That's so amazing. What was it like signing your first professional contract and getting drafted into the NWSL? My first professional contract was with Ostersund in Sweden. Um, they were in the middle of their transfer period in July and I was at my family reunion at the time. And I got a phone call from a friend who used to play at North Carolina, Blakely Mattern. And she was talking to me about how this team, they were struggling a little bit. They needed a new center back. Um, and they needed an answer in like a couple of hours. Like, would you be willing to fly to Sweden, have a trial and see how it goes? So I was like, I talked to my family, like consult them. And I decided, yeah, like this is the best way for me to get my foot in the door. Um, I decided not to go to an NWSL team after um, my 2016 soccer season ended. I wanted to finish my degree. So I stayed until May of 2017. So that kind of struggled to get me in the foot with the NWSL. So I went to Sweden and that was where I got to play my first professional game. But then I decided I was going to come back to the NWSL and I called a bunch of coaches and I was just like, hey, um, would you be willing to let me come to an open tryout? And Rory Danes of Chicago and the coach of New Jersey told me at the time that they would let me come down. And also Paul Riley of the North Carolina Courage asked me I could or told me I could come to an open tryout. So I finally like narrowed it down to the North Carolina Courage. They had one or two spots available and there were 30 people trying out. And I told myself that I wanted the challenge. And if I didn't make the team, then it wasn't meant to be. I wasn't meant to be a professional soccer player in this league. I just was going to hang up the boots. And the very last day of tryouts, Paul brought me back to the like front of the bus. And we were headed to our last preseason scrimmage against the Washington Spirit. And he told me on the bus that I was the one person that got the contract and that's where it's gone ever since. <laughs> that's so amazing. What was your time like playing for the Austrian team? Yeah, um, that was the, it was also the speed. It was the Swedish team. Um, Ostersund. It, it was interesting. Um, they were in a bit of a struggle because they had like nine players leave from the first half of the season to the second half and they had a new coach. So as my first professional experience, it was kind of strange um, just having so much turnover with player and staff, but it was a really cool experience to be living in another country, um, getting to play in another country and experiencing their culture, experiencing their language. Um, almost every single one of them spoke fluent English. So I would try and speak Swedish and they were like, we can speak English better than you can speak Swedish. So. It was really interesting to get there and I was expecting to try and learn their language and they were like, we, we got you, we'll help you out. So it was not the best soccer experience I ever had, but it was an amazing way to get to spend more time in another country, learn different cultures and just experience a different way of life. What was it like playing for the Caribbean United? Uh, the Canberra? Yes. 
Yes, um, that was very weird as well. Um, so that was in Australia of 2019. And it was during the crazy wildfires that were going on. So all the smoke was around. Um, a lot of the areas around Canberra got burned. Um, there was one game where I was playing against my NWSL teammates and uh, they like showed a little clip, like little, I guess, clip right before the game. And all of us are just like breathing super heavy. And there's just a cloud of smoke rolling through because there was a fire really close by and there was winds blowing the smoke towards us. Um, so it was really strange, but I also ended that year when COVID had just started. So it was right, I left Canberra February of 2020. And then right immediately went back to the United States. We had one week of preseason and then got shut down from COVID. So it was very strange to be wearing masks early because I was already with the fires. And then Canberra and Australia was closer to China. Um, so they hit the pandemic a little earlier. What was the feeling like to sign your first contract with the North Carolina Courage? Um, it was surreal. I talked about it a little bit before. Um, I had called my dad a week before the end of the trials and I called him and I was bawling my eyes out and I was like, I'm not going to make this team. This is my last chance to play professional soccer. I told myself if I didn't make this team, I was going to like hang up the cleats. I was going to throw in the towel. And so I had no idea. I called all my friends and I was like, guys, like, this is it. I'm, I'm joining the professional world. Like help me out. Um, and then last minute, um, he, he called me up to the bus and he called every single person, all 30 of us up on the bus and talked to us individually. And I could kind of tell that people hadn't received the contract by their face on their way back. They just didn't have that like happy glow. And I was the last one that he talked to. And I was like, okay, like I haven't seen any happy faces. We'll see if this happens to be me. Um, and I didn't have my hopes super up because I didn't want to be super disappointed if I did. But I went up there and he told me that he liked what he had seen. He saw an athlete and someone who had very like strong desire to get better. And with Paul Riley's system, that's exactly what he wanted. He wanted um, someone that he could train up and like help them out, make them better. Um, if, as long as that's what they were willing to do. And that's what I was willing to do. So it was just really scary to, you know, sign your first contract and I'm surrounded by all these superstars, but it was also really cool to be among them. What was it like to wear, of course, the North Carolina Courage FC jersey for the first time? It was, it, well, it was actually really cold. Um, we played Portland and it was pouring down rain and it was, I think, in March or early April, and it was just a freezing cold game. So I remember that very distinctly, but um, one of the biggest prides I've ever had in my life, uh, putting on that jersey. And then the first time that I ever stepped on the field wearing that jersey, um, it was just, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, I guess shocking because I wasn't planning on playing. Um, Abby Dahlkemper and Abby Ersig were there at the time, but something happened to Abby Dahlkemper and I had no idea. And this was on Friday. I had practiced, I had done extra fitness and everything to make sure that I was prepared um, in case something did happen for like the following week. And uh, my coach, Paul Riley, texted me at three o'clock on Saturday and our game was at seven. And he was like, hey, how are you feeling? And I was like, oh yeah, I'm pretty good. How are, you, how are you doing? And he was like, oh yeah, I'm good. I just wanted to let you know that you'll be starting tonight and I can't wait to watch you. Good luck. And I was like, okay. And I had like a panic attack right there and had no idea. I hadn't really like mentally prepared for it yet, but I think it was almost better because I didn't overthink the process. It just kind of, I had four hours to prepare and the, really get my mindset into like I'm about to play Seattle Rain. I'm gonna be playing against like Jody Taylor and Megan Rapino. And I that was like the first time that that was gonna be happening. So it was really cool <laughs> to say the least. Um 
to one be able to play next to like Crystal Dunn and the teammates that I had, but then also to be able to play against some of these big names that I've been looking up to for years. Um, yeah, surreal experience. Of course, what is that feeling like to play against some of the big names like Alex Morgan, Julie Dunn, and such force that play in the NWSL? Yeah, um, to, I guess something that you when you look at them and you look at their like film, they're the, the reason they are on the national team is because they are like versatile. They can use both feet, um, you know, they're, they're dynamic. So, you, you know, they're, they're tricky to defend because they are the best and they know how to like evade their defenders. Um, so it was definitely terrifying at first, uh, my first game as a rookie, but also just so exciting because I was like, Paul Riley picked me for a reason. He's trusting me to put me back there for a reason. So I must also be good enough to do this. So it started off as like deer in headlights, kind of afraid to no, I, I, I have confidence. Like I can do this. Um, and we ended up having a shutout my very first game. So really big, huge accomplishment, I think. What was the 2018 season like winning the Women's International Cup Championship? Um, that was, to say the least, shocking. Um, we had all of almost all of our like international players gone. Um, they were playing for their country at the time. It was a FIFA international break. So we were missing some of our big names. Um, Abby Dahlkemper was gone. Um, Jaylene Hinkle was gone, Merit Mathias was gone, like almost our whole back line um, and our midfield box were gone. So in, uh, for us to just compete, um, we, we were kind of like shocked that we won the first game. And then we were like, oh my gosh, we're going to play Olympic Lyon. So a few of us stayed back and we watched the second game um, and Lyon just destroyed their team. I can't remember who they played. And we were like, oh my gosh, this team is good. So um, we had to like mentally prepare and Paul knew how good they were at attacking. They had some of their big names and now those big names are in our league, which is really amazing. Um, and I think just really special, but we went to play Olympic Lyon and we were probably in the 60th minute and Abby Erseg, who is like my idol. She's like one of the greatest defenders in the world. If you ask me, um, her and Wendy Reynard are like neck and neck. And I was looking at her and she looked at me and she was like, I don't think we can hold on much longer. Like we were under the pump, like crazy. And every single person on our team ended up making like this crazy, like goal saving block at one point in the game, like life and limb. We were throwing our body in front of the ball. Every single one of us had this crazy block and we ended up beating them. And we won the ICC for the first year, the like inaugural year. It was amazing experience um, to play against some of these international names. Um, I had just watched them not too long ago, like in the Euros, and it was just wild to have that experience. Um, I didn't really know if I was going to be playing or not, and Abby Dahlkemper ended up going to the U.S. national camp. Um, she was healthy. She was amazing at that year. Um, so to get to play against those names at the time that I did, um, really really cool that's so amazing <laughs> of course what is what is your preparation like for game day um yeah I've I think as a senior in college I was a lot more superstitious than I am now um I try and just kind of like do my thing everything that I would normally do on a regular day um as of right now the only two things that I really have to do is I've been texting my goalkeeper, Casey Murphy. Um, her and I have a pretty good connection right now and we've just been helping keeping each other accountable. So I texted her about what I wanted to do in the game. Um, and then I always brush my teeth before the game. And those are the only two things that I have to do that I'm like superstitious about right now, but I don't know, they work. <laughs> What is something that you learned now that you didn't know before playing professional soccer? Hmm. I'm going to think on this one a little bit. Um, probably 
that like how fast the game was um before like I, I watched the games live against like the u.s i watch all the u.s women's national team i watched some of the wps games some of the nwsl games before i got in the league and you can't really tell how fast it is until you watch an nwsl game beside like an ncaa soccer game um the speed is astronomically different like dramatically different and uh that was something i definitely didn't know going in um I didn't really think it was going to be that crazy big of a bump from college soccer to professional soccer. I don't know why, but when I got there, it was eye opening how quick and fast every single player was, how like decisive they were in their movements and their passing. Uh, really, really, that I mean, there's a reason we're the top league in the world. <laughs> That's wonderful. Of course, what are some of your future plans for playing professional soccer? Um, right now it's just kind of playing game by game. Um, I don't think us American players are in this league to play in the league. Like we do want to make the U S one national team. That's the goal of everyone's, um, if it happens for me or not, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but that would be obviously my number one goal, but for now it's just play playing games in the end of yourself, continuing to get experience. Um, I think I would love to end my career in Europe. Um, I'm not sure where. I've always had like a dream of playing in Spain or in France, but I don't really have my sight set on anything too specific. Um, but yeah, as of right now, it's just playing every game day by day. That's wonderful. What advice would you have college soccer players looking to make it into professional soccer? Um, learn how to do all the little things right in college. Um, recovery is huge I think is something um, that we take for granted in college uh, we all talk about it uh, now that we're professionals on our team and just like our diet wasn't quite right we weren't drinking as much water as we should have um, we just didn't we thought we were taking it seriously and then there's a whole new level of seriousness when you get to the professional game um, that college just doesn't have so I think just doing all the little things, continuing to get touches on the ball like every day, even if it's beyond practice, um, hit up against a wall, hit up with a teammate, anything can. Um, and then I guess just recovery and nutrition are really big ketones that you need to hone in on. What advice would you have professional soccer players looking to make it into professional soccer? Um, professional athletes looking to get yes. into the professional? Mm -hmm. um I guess just keep plugging along um try not to overthink it I think I think the biggest thing for all of us is you know like we know we're good enough to play it's can you hold that confidence in a game experience and hold yourself to it in practice um if that makes sense like I think the big thing that kind of stands a lot of people apart in our league is how confident they are or not. Um, and it's not always easy to hold confidence. So when you have it, roll with it, try and continue to like steamroll and just gain traction with it. Um, and when you're in the thick of it and you don't feel like you're a very confident player, um, do whatever you can to try and get that confidence and that swagger back. That's wonderful advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Um, you can find me at Kaylee Kurtz on Instagram or on Twitter. I do not have a TikTok. Sorry, I've only downloaded it because one of my teammates sends me clips all the time. So I don't post anything on TikTok, but Instagram and Twitter are the two places I would say you could look for me. Thank you again, Kaylee Kurtz, for your interview and best of luck in your future with the North Carolina Courage. Awesome. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Kaylee Courage, for your interview, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.